The Colorado Buffaloes just recently had their spring game. There's a lot of new faces on this team that came through either high school recruiting or the transfer portal. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all these guys can play a factor for Colorado in 2024. But I thought we saw a lot of great things to come out of that spring game. Deion Sanders is heading into year two as a head coach. And this Colorado team as a whole has a lot to prove. They had a complete roster overhaul on the offensive line and defensive line. So I wanted to talk about what I saw from Colorado up front. But I also wanted to talk about some of the new playmakers on this team because I think Colorado could potentially be set for a big jump in 2024 with what they have. Let's start off with giving a shout out to running back Craig Offerdahl for putting in the work and earning himself a scholarship as a walk-on. This was potentially the best moment of the weekend for the Buffaloes and it happened right before the spring game started. And one thing I think that we definitely learned from this spring game is that Colorado has a very deep receiving core and it might even be improved from where it was last season. I know they lose their leading receiver Xavier Weaver because he transferred out, but they do return Jimmy Horn Jr. and Travis Hunter next season, and they have many new transfers who could really get involved next season. FAU transfer LaJonte Wester had a great showing in the spring game. Wester had a 19-yard touchdown catch and 66 receiving yards on the day, and he really looks like he can be a reliable target for Shadir Sanders next season. Wester had over 1,000 receiving yards for FAU last season. And he also caught 108 passes, which was actually second in the FBS. So I have a feeling LaJonte Wester is going to be a stud at receiver for Colorado next season. And another returning receiver for Colorado, Amarion Miller, got involved in the spring game with multiple catches. So he should definitely take a step up in 2024. The last season, Amarion Miller had 234 receiving yards and one touchdown as a freshman. And he was a four-star out of high school. We also didn't get to see transfer portal wideout Will Shepard who should also really be in that mix next season because he was a four-star transfer and he was the leading receiver for Vanderbilt last season with just under 700 yards. So if you give him a better quarterback to work with, he could really be a reliable target. And I really think Colorado is set at wide receiver in 2024. And Travis Hunter is going to create a lot of mismatches and defensive backs may have their difficulty stopping these wideouts because it is not just Travis Hunter you have to worry about. Because Colorado has Jimmy Horn Jr., Marion Miller, LaJonte Wester, and Will Shepard. So that really takes a lot of the pressure off a guy like Travis Hunter, who plays both ways. So I am very interested to see who steps up and takes over that Colorado receiving room as that leading receiver in 2024. Because Xavier Weaver was actually that leading receiver last season with 908 yards. And I really don't know if Travis Hunter is going to be that leading receiver, because he plays both ways and Colorado could really use him at cornerback. So if I was to make an early prediction, I would have to say I think LeJonte Wester is going to be that leading receiver for the Buffaloes next season. And he could potentially be a 1,000 yard receiver again. But in general, this receiving room is very deep. And I think Shadir Sanders is going to have a lot more to work with on the offensive side next season. And imagine how great this offense can be if Shadir Sanders takes another step up. Shadir Sanders is a quarterback that is being talked about as an early Heisman contender. And obviously for that to happen, Colorado would have to win a lot of games which is setting a very high expectation for a team that just went 4-8 and eight the previous season. But I really think Shadir Sanders is going to put up even better numbers in 2024 because that offense looked very good in that spring game and you still have many transfer portal receivers on the way, most notably Will Shepard. But having one of the best quarterbacks in the country is a huge positive for Colorado and anything is possible with a great quarterback and Shadir Sanders is likely going to be a quarterback that goes in the first round of the 2025 NFL Draft. And we already saw some early flashes from him in that spring game. We know what to expect from Shader Sanders, but he also looked like he was much better at getting the ball out a lot quicker in that spring game. So if he can limit the amount of times he gets sacked, this offense could be even more dangerous in 2024. But ultimately, he's going to need a lot of help from the offensive line if he wants to be protected in the pocket and avoid the costly sacks. Because last season, Shader Sanders got sacked 52 times and that Colorado offensive line was atrocious. But I have to say the offensive line and the defensive line for the Buffaloes looks much bigger compared to last season. And I understand that it is just a spring game and we will not truly know how much improved they are at the line of scrimmage until the fall comes when the games are played. But I thought the offensive line had some solid pass protection and they opened up some holes in that rushing attack. The offensive line also only gave up one sack on the day and ultimately it may not be that impressive because they are playing against their own defensive line which was not that great last season. But the offensive line is likely going to have multiple new starters next season. And five-star offensive tackle Jordan Seaton is going to play a huge role. But I think the offensive line should be much better than last season. I'm not saying it will be good, but I really don't think it will be as bad as it was last season. 
because Deion Sanders has made it a big priority to beef up that line of scrimmage with some of the new faces up front with a guy like Jordan C and also new faces like Tyler Johnson, Justin Mayers, and Khalil Benson, and many more. And I think at the bare minimum, Colorado should be better on the offensive line because there's a lot more depth. And I also think Colorado is set at running back. And I understand they lost multiple running backs to the portal, including Dylan Edwards, who played a pretty big role on that offense last season. But they added two highly productive running backs in Dallin Hayden and Rashad Amos. They both didn't play in the spring game, but Colorado has been going crazy in the transfer portal. And I think they did a very good job at picking up running backs. Because Dallin Hayden was a pretty good running back, he transferred because he was getting pushed by two of the best running backs in the country, Travion Henderson and Quinshaw Judkins. But Dallin Hayden could really be a great fit for that Colorado offense. And Dallin Hayden had just under 700 rushing yards the past two seasons for the Ohio State Buckeyes. And Rashad Amos was a 1,000 yard rusher for Miami, Ohio last season. So that's a solid pair of running backs for Colorado in 2024 if you ask me. And I do expect them to be that number one and number two running back on the roster for Colorado. And there should be a decent battle for starting running back between those two guys. But in the spring game, we did see freshman cornerback Isaiah Harge work as the first team running back. And he actually had a 40-yard rushing touchdown for the Buffaloes. He ultimately had to step up and be that guy because three Colorado running backs transferred out. And they also had their other two running backs on the roster dealing with injuries. But they have a lot of depth in that running back room. And I think Colorado has a lot more depth at running back heading into next season. And in general, I think they have a lot more depth on the roster with a lot of the transfers coming in. And I understand they had a lot of players also transfer out, but they didn't lose that many important players, and I think they still very much improved their roster. They are shaping up to actually have a very solid secondary on defense, because we know that they returned Travis Hunter and Shiloh Sanders, but they also bring in a very solid four-star safety Preston Hodge from Liberty. They look much deeper at linebacker, and Jeremiah Brown had a big day on the second team defense. He led the day in tackles with seven, and the defense does look improved. And I honestly think we are seeing early signs of improvement with this Colorado team. And I think a bowl game is a realistic expectation for Colorado in 2024. They return a lot from last season, and they beef up at the line of scrimmage. And they brought in many more playmakers, and I think we saw a lot of great things from that spring game. So I am very excited to see what this team could do in 2024, because there are still a lot of transfers yet to arrive on this team, and I think there's still a lot to learn about this team when the fall comes. And that is truly when the results are shown on the field. But I think the game on the road against Nebraska on September 7th is going to help us learn a lot more about this Colorado team. I think Nebraska and Colorado have potential to be two of the most improved teams in all of college football next season. And I'm expecting a step up from both of them in 2024. And that game should really set the tone of the season for both of these teams. And it should be a pretty competitive game. I've been high on Nebraska all offseason. And I am starting to believe in the trend of this Colorado team a bit more. And I really think we saw a lot of positives to come out of both of those spring games. So I think the realistic expectation for Colorado and Nebraska in 2024 is a bowl game or better. And if they put it all together, then they could really make some noise in 2024. So I am definitely excited for that week two matchup between the Cornhuskers and Buffaloes. But you guys let me know your thoughts about Colorado's spring game down in the comments below. But that's going to do it for today's video. Let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you'll love this channel because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that is going to do it guys and peace out.